Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor and Door Texan. Today I'm going to show y'all my recipe for venison egg roll in a bowl. It's a great change of pace for those of y'all looking for something new to do with ground venison, and it's far easier than you think. There's no wrapping, there's no frying, it's a simple enough process where you'll actually want to throw this together on a Tuesday night. As far as ingredients are concerned, there's maybe one or two things you have to go hunt down at the grocery store's international section, but everything else should be very commonly available, if not already in your pantry. So let's get this started with our first step, which is browning our ground venison. In a pan over medium high heat, toss in one pound of ground venison. Now I'm using venison burger that I've already blended some fat into. And if you wanna see how I make that venison burger, make sure to click on the link above. Now, if you're using 100% ground venison, however, make sure to add about a tablespoon of tallow or bacon fat to the pan so it doesn't get all crumbly and dry. Once the venison is browned thoroughly, let's say after about five to eight minutes, go ahead and remove the pan from heat and set it aside while we work on some other ingredients. Now, some of my eagle-eyed viewers may notice I'm using a new high-walled pot for this portion of the cook, but you can just use one pan or one pot for the whole thing. I just realized too late that my original pan was a little shallow for all the veg I'm about to toss in. So, into the new pot, add a dash of oil and then toss in one small, finely diced, medium yellow onion, and then let it simmer until it's completely translucent. After the onion, we're going to add about 14 ounces of coleslaw mix. This has turned out to be a huge time saver, because if the world didn't have pre-shredded bags of coleslaw mix, you'd be chopping cabbage and carrots until your arm was just about ready to fall off. Make sure to stir the coleslaw veg frequently, and after about 5-7 to seven minutes, it should start to reduce and wilt considerably. Once everything's had a chance to wilt down, throw in 3 cloves of minced garlic and 1 teaspoon of grated ginger. Stir those things up a bit and let the veg continue to cook down for an additional two minutes. After those two minutes, it's time to put the venison back in your pot. And then follow that up with the juice of one navel orange, the juice of one lime, and a quarter cup of soy sauce. Mix everything really well and continue to stir and toss the ingredients for another five minutes, giving the liquids plenty of time to reduce and get absorbed into everything. After that five minutes, cut your heat and add our final cooking ingredient, one teaspoon of sesame oil. And just like that, we're ready to head over to the plates. When I plate this dish, there's a few things I always reach for. First, I give it a healthy sprinkle of chopped green onions, which adds a nice raw onion bite of flavor, as well as a crispy texture to a bowl of otherwise soft meat and vegetables. Then I make sure to sprinkle some sesame seeds over it, which adds a nutty finish and again, more crunch to the bite. Finally, I grab some spicy mayo, which is essentially just mayonnaise mixed with sriracha that builds up a spicy kick of flavor and makes for a fun presentation when it's striped over everything. If you're looking to add even more crunch to your bite, you can always add fried wonton strips, tortilla strips, heck, even Fritos. Like all my recipes, play around with it and make it your own. Just remember to report back in the comments below on what worked for you. Venison egg roll in a bowl. It's a perfect change of pace for people tired of the same old, same old when it comes to ground venison. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to cook overall, and it is absolutely delicious. That'll do it for this one, and thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or tips of your own to add, please feel free to leave a comment below. I always try to make myself available to my viewers, and I'll be happy to tackle whatever comments pop up. Now, if you're new to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you considered hitting that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, it certainly helps keep me going, and you'll have access to countless recipes with more great content to come. Alright y'all, take care.